and, and uh, a couple things emerged from that study that I think are really important for, uh, for uh, understanding American education policy. Um, the first is that a very significant proportion of kids tell us that they're just going through the motions when they're in school. I mean, that they're not engaged, that they're not trying their hardest, that they're bored. Uh, clearly, we are not challenging kids in American schools as much um, as we should. And you see this if you do international comparisons. We didn't in this study, but if you look at how much time kids spend on homework, for example, the average in our study, and this is a figure that you see in lots of different studies, is about four to five hours a week for a typical high school student. In Japan, it's four to five hours a day. And so you see the difference in magnitude of how hard we push kids here in America compared to other, other places. Um, the other thing that we found um, was that uh, parents and peers have a huge impact on kids' engagement in school, um, independent of what's going on in the classroom. And so kids who are raised in households where their parents practice uh, better parenting, a kind of parenting that has been called authoritative parenting, where they're, they're firm but they're warm and where their parents are involved in their schooling, where they go to school conferences and so forth, that those kids do better in school. Um, at the same time, it's not just the home, because we also found that there's significant uh, peer pressure um, on kids that makes a difference. And unfortunately, uh, more often than not, it's peer pressure to do uh, not as well as you might. So a very high proportion of kids told us that they refrain from raising their hand in class uh, to answer a question because they're afraid that their uh, peers will make fun of them. And so we need to do something to transform the culture that says uh, it's okay to be smart. You can also be cool in other ways, but it's also okay to be smart. Now, uh, perhaps the most controversial uh, finding that we came up with had to do with ethnic differences uh, in achievement. Across all of the schools that we studied, Asian American kids were doing significantly better than white kids, and white kids were doing significantly better than black and Latino kids. And that's controlling for family income, it's controlling for parental education, it's controlling for other factors that might uh, be correlated with ethnicity and that might have played a role in this too. And when we look at why that is, we see several important things. The first is, uh, this is a great question that one of my collaborators said, we have to put this on a questionnaire. And the question was, what's the lowest grade you could get without your parents getting angry? All right? So for the Asian kids, it's an A minus. Right? For, for the white kids, you know, it's more like a B. And for the black and Latino kids, it's somewhere you know, around a B minus or C plus. So clearly, there are different expectations um, in, in these households. Um, the second uh, thing is that when we ask kids about the importance of schooling, we see really different patterns in how kids from different ethnic groups answer the question. Asian kids tell us that they are sure that if they do poorly in school, something bad will happen to them. They won't get a good job in life. All right? um, black and, to a certain extent, Latino kids don't have that belief. So uh, it, 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 every, every, all ethnic groups share the belief that doing well in school has a payoff. It's how they think about doing poorly in school that makes a difference. And uh, the Asian kids do well in part because they're really afraid of what the consequences of not doing well are. And I think that comes back to the standards that their parents have set for them at home. I don't know, I mean, about, about how it's changed attitudes. It certainly hasn't done anything to kids' achievement, which has stayed pretty flat. So if you look at the um, at these tests that are given by the federal government year after year after year. I mean, there's a little bit of fluctuation from year to year. There's been a little improvement in, I think, eighth grade math, something like that. But, but across the board, I think anybody uh, looking at the data objectively would say that none of the things that we've tried to do um, in the last 30 years has made a difference. Um, achievement is lower now than it was uh, in the 1970s. Um, and uh, that's, what, that's partly what prompted us to do the study, right? Because we're sp we spend all this money on school reform, and we're constantly having debates about it, how we train teachers, what we pay teachers, how much money we give schools, uh, whether we should have big schools or small schools. People try to do all these experiments um, where they change these things, and it doesn't make a difference. It really doesn't make a difference. 
Um, I'm not saying that teachers shouldn't be well paid. Of course they should be well paid. But that alone is not going to raise uh, achievement among American students. Do schools need resources? Of course they need resources. But lots of research shows that there is a very small relationship between the resources that a school gets and the output that it produces in kids. And, and I think, and I, th I think if you look at, at, at projects like the, the Harlem Children's Zone, where they have, uh, they have attacked this problem as a community problem and not as a problem that's just located in the classroom. And they're seeing terrific results there. So our point in this book is that you really need to think about the whole context in which kids grow up and not just what takes place inside the classroom. Well, you know, the, 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 the fact that um, underprivileged kids uh, do so poorly in school is a huge, huge problem for society but with tremendous implications for um, our economic future. Um, and, and the gap between the, the rich and poor uh, has grown considerably, and that uh, 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 trickles down to achievement. It's not just in terms of, of family income. Um, the way that we finance schools, uh, I, I think, is misguided um, and, and disadvantages kids from poor neighborhoods. So um, certainly uh, uh, unhinging school financing from property taxes, um, which would allow us to redistribute tax income in, in a way that would be more equitable, would certainly be something that's, that's important. Um, a second thing is this issue of standards. Um, uh, we just don't uh, hold uh, kids in poor neighborhoods to uh, the same academic standards that we hold kids in wealthy neighborhoods to. And so when kids in poor neighborhoods get promoted from grade to grade or graduate from school, um, it, it's often a sham. I mean, often their diplomas are meaningless. I mean, there are kids with high school diplomas in this country who can read uh, no better than at a fifth grade level. And so we, we, we have... Um, dismissed that population of young people as being not important enough to really uh, care about. Um, we also need to, to do a better job at engaging their families uh, in, in their schooling. Um, a lot of their parents, of course, had their own problems in school, and so they're more reluctant. Uh, they're more uncomfortable showing up uh, in school um, because it's, was a, it was an uncomfortable place for them when they were kids. Um, so we need to think of better ways of getting parents involved um, in, in their kids' educations. Well, I think that we, 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 we can make schools more challenging, I mean, for, for starters, so that kids are, are, are pushed harder and come out with, uh, with better skills and more knowledge uh, than they are right now. Um, I'm somebody who, who favors uh, national exams and having national standards. Um, I believe, I may be wrong, off by one country or so, but I believe every industrialized country in the world, except the United States, has national standards for kids' um, achievement. So I think allowing education to be kind of a local issue is part of the problem because it allows districts to set their own uh, uh, standards. We've moved away from that a little bit, um, but there's been huge rebellion um, against that, and people have spoken out against uh, performance-based evaluations of kids. I think it's a good thing to do. Um, you know, the major objection to it is that it forces teachers to teach to the test and that they're not doing things in classroom that are, that are creative or that promote critical thinking. Well, if that's the case, we, we need to design better tests. I mean, th there's no problem with teaching to the test if the test is measuring something um, that you want kids to, to achieve. Um, so I, I think there are a number of things that we could do to improve uh, academic achievement among American kids.